Hello and howdy. Welcome back to JavaScript Girl in a .NET world. My name is Alyssa Nichol and today we are going back to the basics with C Sharp. Hopefully we can learn a little bit. i got some stories to share and uh, some protected classes to look into. You know, your basic. Uh, yes, do do the focus time for one hour. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to, I think it's like learn. Hang on, we're just going to, I'm going to screen share and we'll type it together and it'll be hideous. Uh, screen share window. We'll do this one just for this hot second. And then you can also be like bigger, bigger. Er, 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 er. Okay. Hello in the chat. If you're just now joining, it's good to see you. Hopefully we can learn some basics today. Um, I recently learned about learn, which is like a lot of learns in one sentence. It's like learn.microsoft.com. That's what I thought it was. And um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I am a part of the women of .NET panel, committee, committee. I think we decided committee. Naming's hard. Um, and they were showing me how you can like create courses in Learn and like um, either for, you know, students to follow along because DevReach is coming up this fall. I'm going to like make my face bigger while I story, story talk. And welcome. I see the numbers going up in chat. Good to see you. Say hi in chat. I want to see your faces, which is me saying I want to see your names in chat. Um, so we are doing a women of .NET. Hi, Thindal. It's good to see your beautiful face. Hi, Duca. Oh my gosh, you guys are so beautiful. Hey, nerd. It's good to see you. I'm going to put your little names up here because they're beautiful. And it's like the closest thing I have to seeing your face. I don't know. That's weird. Um, Simon, hi. Okay, so we are doing a Women of .NET workshop. If you are in near Boston, it's going to be in the fall, September 11th through the 14th. And we're doing um, DevReach again. And usually DevReach is in Bulgaria. This was pre-COVID, of course, when I talk about usually. And we're doing it in Boston this year. And I'm really, really excited about the lineup of speakers I have, uh, both JavaScript, .NET, everything in between, accessibility. Been a while. How have you been? I know. Hey, weird. Hi. <laughs> weird, weird. Sorry. If I abbreviate oddly, you can just always correct me. It has been a hot second. I've been good. I was traveling and then I got a cold on, on the on the tail end of the traveling, but I, I said it earlier in the stream, I went to VS Live in Austin and oh my God, I fell in love with Austin. I was like riding around on my Lime scooter, like scoot scooting about and seeing the bats and like riding a kayak and riding a kayak, kayaking a kayak, rowing a kayak. Anyways, it was magical. And then the week before that, I was in um, St. Louis, Missouri for DevUp and they were both great. They were both, oh, there's a raid, hi. Um, Hi, Paul. It's good to see you. Hey, Code with Sean. I would both, both, I would recommend both. Um, both conferences were amazing. I, I really don't know. I, I was like, is it just because I haven't been traveling in a while and I miss it? I don't think so. I think both VS Live and DevUp are worth putting on. At least the VS Live in Austin because the organizers were amazing. The community was amazing. I was asked... I came in with 13 people. Thanks, Thindal. That was so sweet of you. And welcome. Today, hopefully, we're going to go over some C-sharp basics. I'm Melissa Nichol. This is JavaScript Girl in a .NET world, and I know Angular. <laughs> and as I was saying earlier in the stream, I went, uh, it was like a week and a half ago, I was asked to do a product demo for .NET MAUI on stage at VS Live in Austin. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Because I totally know .NET well enough to do it. So, of course, being me, I did not use the prepackaged demos. I made my own custom demo. <laughs> and it was like five days after Maui was out of preview. And, but it, it, I didn't die. And the, it worked. Um, but it did bring to light that I don't really know the basics of C Sharp that well. So if any of you are like, this resource, like, that's yeah, mm, send it. I don't think, I know YouTube blocks links, but I don't think Twitch blocks links. So send it to me. I was just perusing this website and talking about it. And that's what brought us to DevReach because, and I don't really like that view. Is there like a me bigger, but not as bigger? That's okay. 
but we're going to have to make this like massive. Um, but the women of .NET, some of the ladies in that steering committee, they were telling me about Learn. And I was like, this is the thing. And so we're going to use it to kind of make words, uh, to make a course of sorts that people can kind of go through for DevReach and win prizes and do on their own time beforehand. If only there was a .NET user group in Tulsa. I know. Code with Sean. He likes to sass me. I will come to your user group and learn C Sharp basics. Actually, I don't know. I feel like this is what, like a fear of mine. I feel like people, especially at meetups, don't go over the basics. Because why would they? Right? It's like a user group for hardcore .NET nerds or for Angular nerds, right? So like sometimes people will cover them, but it's always like a fear of mine of like, they're going to be talking about some deep stuff, man, and I don't know what protect it is. So I was hoping we could find like a C, C, C sharp, I can't with the words, C sharp basics on learn. But if any of you are like, here's a better one, I will totally follow it. The end goal is for me to be able to use C-sharp knowledge to write a to-do app in .NET MAUI. That would be nice. Now, if there are people in the chat and you're like, I am an expert in all things .NET, and that's not how you should do this, then please, for the love of God, use your words at this point in time to stop me. Because that's where I'm kind of going. I, and I, I mentioned it before, if you love Blazor and you're like, why aren't you using that? It's just too close to the web. Maui was like all fresh, all new, and I really loved it, and I kind of fell for it. And so that's what that's what I want to do. But um, if you like videos, Jeff Fritz is really good. Noise or just go for it. <laughs> you can always ask me questions at any time. Yes, I actually love this idea. I'm going to bring expert in Maui. I know it's funny because it's just out of preview. That's actually one thing that I learned. It is mother flipping hot in here. I'm going to go open the doors. One second. One second. And if anybody randomly walks in my house, well, we will all greet them together. Okay. Um, yes, I want to learn. I know what we were talking about before. Oh, I've <laughs> 10 years of experience. That's what we were talking about. Right, right. Okay. You might not <laughs> raise his hand. Uh, hey, Smab, it's good to see you. You might not be an expert in Maui, but maybe you've been around the block and like, you know things about not .NET that I don't because I was just thinking, hear me out. If I learned how to kind of piece the puzzle pieces together in C Sharp, then I could just kind of shove those puzzle pieces inside a .CS file that's in my .NET MAUI app and then it would ship. I don't know. It sounds legit to me, but also I, I know Angular. So <laughs> wasn't there a guy who didn't, get in an interview because he didn't have enough years experience in a framework and he created <laughs> yeah. that story sounds really familiar no i don't think it's an urban legend i think it's actually a horrible horrible reality that we live in as developers in the job market but okay um let's go back to here explore learn i'm gonna see if we can find can i use the search oh see here's the downfall oh i'm not sharing my score <laughs> You can't say this one, that one, this one, that one, add to stream. Um, searches can either be amazing or reveal the under the dark underbelly that is your website. So I don't mean to like if this goes poorly, it wasn't my intention. Um, that sounds like the tech industry. Mm. Yeah, I'm calling myself a .NET, uh, a .NET Maui expert with, we'll say, we'll give me three years, three years of .NET Maui experience, and we'll just start counting now. It's totally legit. Um, C Sharp Basics, please. So I had, during my talk, I was trying to use an override. Why was I trying to use an override when I didn't even know what an override was? It's because, and we should all go on to Sam's Twitter, Sam Basu, and yell at him because... <laughs> He helped me fix my code last minute before I went on stage. And he goes, I don't know what's going wrong. I don't know why you can't do – because I was just trying to put data in a table, which you think, uh, uh, it's pretty basic, Alyssa. I'm well aware of how basic that is. But he was like, I don't know how to fix this. Put this thing in an override and see if it works. It worked. And I was like, great. 
So then, of course, I'm in pure Alyssa style. Sorry. I'm eating cucumbers. If that freaks any of you out or is like a trigger, you can let me know and I will stop eating cucumbers. Um, so pure Alyssa style, I erased the code that had all of the working bits. And then I got on stage and I was like, okay, let's do some Maui. <laughs> and of course, I know, I know Angular. So um, it went really poorly. I couldn't remember exactly like the right syntax. And at one point, I think it was because I was using, hang on, let me see if I can get this right. I think it was because I was using private and you can't like extend private. So it needed to be protected so that I could extend it in the override. Please let me know if I jacked that one up. But that's what I want to learn more about. I want to understand the basics of C Sharp so that when I start doing Maui demos or when I start writing my to-do app in Maui, I know what the flip I'm doing because that would be nice. So back to this and also that's how I get. I'm yelling at Sam on Twitter. That's how I need you to know this. Everyone gets their jollies. Okay. Everyone. Um, <laughs> weird, weird. That's right. Shut the front door. <laughs> cool. Okay. So I kind of maybe have a small handle then on private and protected. That's exciting. Okay. Seriously though. Take your first steps with C sharp. That sounds cool. Right. You're, oh God, there's so many. <laughs> Oh, I hate it. There's so many. Logic? Yeah, I like logic. Work with data. No, I don't want to work with data. Build .NET applications for C Sharp. Okay, this is getting really difficult. Uh, I'm going to just like zoom way in until the sidebar goes away and then be like, hmm. You know what would be nice is like ratings, you know, like five stars, four and a half stars, that kind of thing. Also, no one has mentioned that crunchy cucumbers is their trigger, so I'm going to continue eating them until someone stops me. Private is private to that class. Protected allows for subclasses to work with them. Mm, question. I don't know how home. Very little I know about C sharp. When you say subclasses, does that also mean above classes that perhaps want to be shared and using or only like children classes? What do you mean? Define sub, weird beard. Actually, how do you get started with the basics of C sharp these days? We used to talk about it in 2001. I feel like I really missed the train there. Well, you all were like learning C Sharp. I was like, hmm, JavaScript, which is fine. I love the web. I was showing this off earlier. I finally got, I've like been graduated for so long and I finally put my sticker on from Full Cell where I got uh, my web design and development degree. And I learned <laughs> my very first language was ActionScript. <laughs> rip and then i moved to javascript and then i learned angular js and kind of went from there vehicle car Ooh, i love analogies where's a metaphor i get those mixed up car can access vehicles protected car can access vehicles protected vehicle does not know car exists mm, that totally makes sense mm -hmm. yes yes this makes 100 percent sense no, I do not think you missed the train, but I think most conferences take a lot of knowledge for granted. They do. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because I think, yes, I'm going to be speaking in this moment from a perspective of a JavaScripter because I have my claws very deep in the JavaScript community and I know a lot about conferences and I have a lot of friends that are organizers and I'm organizing my first conference, blah, 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 blah. Do you know why beginner content isn't there? It's because it doesn't sell. It doesn't sell the tickets. Unless it is the latest, the coolest, the most flashy, like the, I've never seen that before. It doesn't sell tickets. It all goes back to money. So if you are a good organizer or a good community, you obviously throw in the content that brings up your beginner level people or brings in those newbies. Um, but you, you, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. And it's because you, it, like at the end of the day, you have to have money to run the conference or the meetup or whatever the thing is. I believe it's just children. What's children? <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> hmm. Only vehicle can access vehicles privates. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm lowering my desk because my feet are falling asleep. Okay. Everyone can access vehicles publics. <laughs> this may help. Oh, God bless. Okay. .NET, Microsoft, and C Sharp. I'm going to... Hang on. Hang on. 
I'm going to I'm going to type it out because I can't access it via the clicking. So you're going to all watch me butcher this one. Uh, what was it? .NET, .Microsoft, and US. Learn, learn, uh -huh. uh, C sharp. I'm going to mute because I feel a cough coming on and nobody wants to hear that. That is a lot of content. Oh, oh, do you all know these people? These people right here? Hang on. I will like click on their video. Anytime I see like beginner content like this and then you see like the faces, right? Like these, you're like, oh, those must be like people in the community, like who work for Microsoft, who know things. Only others in the same box, DLL slash project can access vehicle internal. Okay. Only others in the same box. Hang on. Do mono repos exist in this world? And if so, do they all have their own DLLs, DLLs or how does that work? Sorry, we are getting way off the rails. So today is my last day at my current employer. I need to head to the office soon, but Alyssa, holler at me if I can help. We can do a Zoom call. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Code with Sean, for hanging out. I will hit you up. Here's what I'll actually do. I will bring my broken C Sharp, .NET, Maui, whatever code to the meetup in Tulsa and be like, help. And, and then it'll be this weird pairing session in the back of the meetup. Okay. But yes, have a good day. I hope your next employer is much um, better. I don't know. We need to talk. Hopefully it's a good story. Hopefully it was a, a parting of ways that went well. Thanks for coming to our TED Talk. <laughs> uh, weird beard. For subclasses, I believe it's only children for protected. Does anybody know what the freaking override is? Hanselman. Is that Hanselman? Oh, my God. I think it is. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. That was a really loud snort. I only know of him because I was on a FaceTime call with him. And <laughs> he looked different because he was like, I don't know, not all professionally dressed and stuff. But I was, uh, it was a long story. But yes, one of the Scots. Mm, okay. So kind of like the um, the Angular community at NGConf one year, I think we had, it's like a conference with like 1,500, 2,000 people. And I think we had over like 50 Davids. And some of them were like well-known Davids. And some of them were just like random Joe Davids. But it was so funny because we were like celebrating the fact that year that we had so many Davids. But apparently there's a lot of Scots on this side. Okay. I have seen the woman stream on Twitch. Oh, okay. So these are great. I am absolutely, because like, look at these. Can we all see? We can see, kind of. Can I? I don't think if I zoom like that, it no, it doesn't zoom for you. Um, so the sidebar says like things like, what is C sharp? Hello world, C sharp. The basics of a string, searching a string, numbers and integer math. It's great. I love this. I know that we um, do have differences between JavaScript numbers and C sharp numbers. That was one of the first things that I learned. I started reading a C sharp book um, about the basics of C sharp. And that was, it seems to always be the place, which I find is really interesting because numbers are kind of boring. <laughs> Please don't kill me for saying that. It seems to be the place where a lot of people start though. And I, th I think I see why, because like a lot of things can build off of that. Um, the very first place that I started though was like, how do I do binding? Like I want to bind A and B like on the UR and like back where I'm getting my data. I want to like bind it so that live it will update. Maybe that's a very JavaScript thing of me. Yes. We know them. Scott and Kendra Haven. Ooh. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to make a sticky note real quick. God, you must think I'm such a noob of these people so that I can hunt down their Twitter handles later um, and follow them. Cause like that's kind of how I, it's like a, my Pokemon, gotta collect them all. Like if I'm like following them on Twitter, then that means like, you know, they have good content. They're prolific in the community. They helped me out in chat, you know. Um, hang on, Kendra Haven. I'm sure her name is even in the YouTube. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm so sorry, chat. I'm like 10, 10 chats behind. We're gonna fast forward. Repos bang equal DLL. Okay. Okay. They are not the same. A repo can have multiple. Can we call them dills? Is anyone on board with that? Is no one on board with that? Let me know. Yes, Kendra. Okay. We meet tomorrow night. Oh, sick. There's good parting ways. I'll miss them. Oh, that's good. I'm glad it was, I'm glad it was mutual and nice and good. Doing outreach endeavor. Oh, that's him. Scott Hunter, a higher up.net management thingy. <laughs> and there's Scott Guthrie. I've heard of Guthrie. 
Why have I heard of him? Bossy Boss Boss? <laughs> what? If he doesn't have a red shirt, it's a secret cry for help because someone has kidnapped his cat. Okay. So I've heard of the red shirt. I've heard of the Scott Guthrie. Although, hmm, is he basically the, um, I'm trying to think of his JavaScript equivalent. Osmani? Is he like Osmani kind of in the .NET community? Uh, I don't know of any Scots. I'm ashamed. <laughs> that makes me feel better because I was like, ah, uh, Hanselman? That's all I got. But Findle knows them all. I've watched that video series. It's quite good. That's awesome. I'm wondering, I'm actually wondering in this series if they get to um, private, public, what are, what are those things called? Types of to class types, class permissions, uh, async await. Oh, whoa, that went that took a deep dive. Executive VP of AI and cloud these days. <laughs> That's a pickle. Yeah, okay, so we could. I just hear me out. And if you're like, Alyssa, why are you so hungry? I don't know, I'm always hungry, but I think we should call nougat, nugget, like a chicken nugget, and we should call DLLs dills. I think that's really a thing we as a community should start doing. Executive VP, yes, I read that one. Getting canceled for finding numbers boring is the most 2020 thing I've ever. <laughs> I didn't cancel the book. I just put it down and I never reopened it. And it was because I was like bleeding after like the very deep detailed knowledge that I learned about with like the reason C sharp numbering system is so much more accurate and like acceptable and at the end of the day like I don't care but I know I should care and I know that makes me a bad person I'm well aware of the fact like in charge of Azure hmm. Azure that's ringing a bell of something I should have once done but I never did access modifiers private access modifiers yes weird beard for the flipping win okay uh, access modifiers. I'm writing that down because I couldn't think of the term. And weird beards like on top of life. My God. Let's see. Uh, access mod. Let's go. I'm going to go back to this one and I want to see access modifiers. Modifier. Modif Configure. And oh no. <sighs> Overwhelmed. Add logic to your. What is happening? Take your first steps. Let's do this one. That one feels like it's going to be okay and it won't make me panic. It's always a video. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. It's really funny because my very first job, I worked at Code School and they got acquired by Plural Site a long time ago. I think some of my videos are still up. Um, that's, <laughs> that's where I made my claim to fame was with my uh, Code School Angular JS video videos course. But um, I hate learning by video. I do. I do. It's because I, if it's not like written down, then that means I have to go write it down in order to learn it. So if someone sends me a video on something to learn, then I will watch that video and stop it every two minutes so I can take the note of what they just said. So like, if it's not in written form, I'm like, God, the effort this is going to take me. Nugget is perf perfect already. It's like a candy bar center. Oh, you, you're saying nougat. You mean that. You know, I guess it is already kind of a food. I guess that's salt. What about gif jif? GIF, 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 GIF. It's GIF. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, the creator can go, I thank you. Then no, I knew there was a reason. There's this like funny skit thing where someone like, someone's like saying something. I think I'm sure it's about early mornings or something. And the person looks over at them and they're like, we are not compatible. And I feel like I just had that moment with you, Thindle, but the exact opposite of like, yes. Um, actually, I think you died, but I was still wrong. Oh gosh, that took a dark turn. Three hours, 51 seconds. What? This this thing? Which thing? Hang on. What's three hours? Is this one three hours? Oh, wow. His name's Bob Tabor. He's a program manager. I think that's good. That's that's only a minute long. So I don't know. What's three hours? Um, long stream. Yes. Uh, docs. Microsoft. Fundamentals. Object oriented accessibility. Weird beard. Are you sending me? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go to my own Twitch and I'm gonna pull up the chat and see if I can. 
mom, 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 mom. Just click on it because that's too, it's too long. I can't do it. This is what Beard just sent. I don't know if you want to be called Weird or Beard, but you can correct me. Um, oh, there they are. Public protected internal. Oh, no. There's more than three. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are there more than three? I love streams, but when learning, I want to read. I So my my way to learn is like to actually put it in code and then to do that like 10 more times in like 10 other demo apps. Um, and so I just need something to read and then try it because the pause start, pause starts with the videos. The default accessibility is private. Interesting. Okay. I'm with Alyssa on video learning. Oh, yay. I had to use NPM yesterday. Oh, shut up. Was it amazing? Did you love it? Are you now a JavaScript developer and you're never turning back? Or was it like some sort of node app? Because I don't support node apps. I like live content, though. Mm. No, I can I can fill you on that one. It's, I don't know how to say it. Finally, the discussion is over. Because see, whenever you type it out like that, someone could still read it as a GIF. So mm -hmm. I have a one gigabyte connection. <laughs> Took me 10 minutes to get and build the resources to run a static site generator. Oof. Gatsby. Wow. I don't know. I've never tried Gatsby. It says three hours and 51 minutes under the title. <laughs> I only know public and private. Hey, so that's super weird. So like overrides. We need to talk about overrides. Hang on. Access modifiers is like number one thing Alyssa needs to learn, know, and teach others. And then number two is overrides because I don't know why it helped me. And we could go and pull up that demo. Let's do it. Let's be crazy people. I'm going to stop screen sharing that. And it's going to get weird for a sec because I'm going to screen share everything. And then you'll all be like, oh, no, I see my comments. I know. That's fine. Uh, we're going to go. Where's the this one? That button. Do I want to be like little? Sure. I can be. I can be little. Okay. Make you go to uh small bits small bits and then off to the side thank you thank you darling and then what we're gonna do is pull up yes we know we are screen sharing thank you my terminal and we'll see if we can find that that app it was very last minute um and i hopefully you shouldn't need to update me bits to run it <sighs> i get these errors and i don't i don't want to hear it chat i don't know how to fix them they're like x cody I don't, I don't know. It's not like I'm an iOS developer. I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting them. I'm just hoping I can ignore them long enough until I get a new Mac, like in the fall when the M2 comes out and just be like, <laughs> goodbye. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, development. What's chat saying? That's what we have in F sharp. Oh, public and private. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Protected internal kind of makes sense. Can access vehicles protected, but only if the car is in the same DLL. Yeah, it does make sense. Private protected. I haven't got a clue about it, though. Um, some info on C-sharp overrides. Yes! Oh, my God, weird beard! I love you! Am I allowed to love you? I don't know. I do. Uh, where's the... Why is chat window not here? You're all seeing me fail epically. It's fine. Chat. Chat. I think I have to make it bigger. Or There it goes. All right, don't worry. You won't have to stare at it for long. I'm just going to click on this and then Smab's link. I don't know what it is. Y'all better not get too inappropriate on me because I'm not reading these links. I'm just clicking. Okay. And then I'm going to go and then drag Weird Beard's link first and we're going to check it out. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I want to learn about overrides. The modifier is required to extend or modify the abstract or virtual implementation of an inherited method property indexer. I didn't know that was a thing. Or event. I wonder if it's like a machine level thing. Indexer. It sounds like it is. Like a node in the DOM kind of thing. Hmm. In the following example, the square class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that needs an example because that definition must provide an overridden implementation of get area. Because get area is inherited from the abstract shape class. <sighs> All right, we're gonna take it a little bit slower. Square class. Mm -hmm. I see you. I see that you're inheriting from shape. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Provide an override implementation because get area is inherited from class shape. And then get, who are you talking about? This guy? This method is inherited from shape. So we have to override in order to access it? Why? What? Why? Hang on. I'm gonna read it one more time, but slower. 
It must provide an overridden implementation of get area. So I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning to understand it's because it's an abstract class. Like what if this class was what if shape was like not abstract? Why is it abstract? Who the frick is abstract? Go back to this this one. Not there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to chat. Hopefully you all have answers. I'm gonna go backwards though. An indexer allows you to iterate over a collection. Oh, that's not at all what I thought. I thought it was like, you know, very deep level indexing, like where something's actually being stored, like the bytes and the bits and stuff. In shape, get area is abstract. Right, right, right. Um, because the original declaration is abstract. I know. Who is this? Who is this abstract? It has a signature, but not an implementation. <gasps> Wait, abstract does? Wait, that sounds funky. Hang on. Let's check it out. It has a signature. I don't know who's signing what. Maybe the fact that it exists is it being signatory, but it doesn't have an implementation, meaning nobody's using it. I'm not going to cry. You're going to cry. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to move this over to this side of the screen and make it like that so I can always see you. An abstract class, class and method does not require implementation. Mm. Which So you're saying that we're not actually implementing this here whenever I'm inheriting, inheriting? That sounds too JavaScript-y for this. When I am getting get area from shape, like, isn't that me kind of using it? it? Seems like I'm kind of using it. Abstract means you can create a shape. You can only create a specific shape. It also says that all shapes need to have the function get area. Oh, <gasps> Weird. What would happen if you didn't have get area and you tried to run it? Would the app not compile and it would yell at you because and it'd be like does not implement get area, therefore no. Like, cool. I want to try it. <laughs> I need to try it. Is there like a code pin for C sharp? We're gonna Google it. We're Googling it. <clears throat> and I know, I know there was like a lot in chat that I missed. You guys are going really fast and I have ADHD. So if it's like gone, it's gone. And I'm so sorry about that. Just say it over and over again until I see it. If you really want me to C sharp. What am I looking for? Code pen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That fiddle. Hmm. Did someone suggest it? Did someone? <laughs> weird, weird. <laughs> we need to meet. And not in a weird way. I just, in a weird, weird way. I just want to like meet the brilliance that is behind the beard. Okay. So not net fiddle. Um, we're going to do it. I'm so excited. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I want to use this guy. I want to use this, this, this whole thing right here. Hmm? Link pad. Someone's getting real fancy with their suggestion. Compile error. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. You're using the over method square docket area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sounds like abstracts are super useful and that everyone uses them all the time. Am I wrong? And do they exist in F sharp? Uh, okay. Enter name here. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a name. God, God, oh God, oh God. Mm, effort. <sighs> Breathe. Okay. Run project. Run project. Run. Is it running? I have no idea. I mean, I would assume it's running. Uh, Alyssa tries to override. Is this the actual tries? <laughs> Lols. Um, save. Oh, God, it wants things from me. Okay, it's going to be fine. We're going to sign in. That account doesn't exist. Ah! It's fine. It's totally fine. I am signing up. We're going to – wow, those are some big buttons. I think it's because I'm so zoomed. But I'm not afraid of a big button, okay? I think we should – what is happening? Display name? Speedo Girl or Alyssa? I don't know. Yeah, I'm probably going to regret it, but I'm going to sign up with <laughs> my gamer tag. Why not? Account activated. I don't know how to make it. Back to the editor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now can I save? Alyssa tries – Overrides. Is override have two R's or one R? Mm, override. It should have two. It has two. Wow. And it's super weird to see those two R's right next to each other. But I'm going to leave it because it's supposedly accurate. Oh, everybody's talking and I love you. Okay, you're all suggesting like pad, you could get a public string color. Oh, no, that's a lot of words. You 
could have a public string color get set on shape not marked as abstract and that's just there in all the inherited types oh my god do you even understand how far over my understanding of what are they even called excessive accessors accessors you are everything about me is <laughs> change the compiler to net six why isn't it already net six Rosalind 4? Oh my god, there's so many things I don't know. That's what's so exciting about .NET. Like that feeling of like there's so much to learn. Who is Rosalind? Where did she go? Why am I not running with her? Okay. Change the compiler. Yes, I did that. Nerd herd or really wanted me to do that as well. Yes, F sharp as well as VB has abstract classes. New phone who dis. God, I love you, Ed. Okay, but listen to me, Ed. Chad is teaching me about accessors and overrides. They're super smart. And also, I just made a .NET Fiddle account. Shouldn't have used my gamer tag. Regretting that already. Saw we? What are we apologizing for? Oh, because you were talking way over my head. No, it's totally fine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to screenshot what you said to me so that I can read it at a slower pace <laughs> later on. Literally, I'll see that screenshot on my desktop and I'll be like, here we go. And I'll just read it until it finally clicks. So I have, I guess, one file here. I entered a name and now it's gone. I, I don't, uh, maybe it's because I changed it to .NET 6. So now it's like a brand new application. So we're going to name it again. I don't know. I think this is my app name. Overrides. Uh, save. I hate saved. Am I being stuck? <laughs> Blazer REPL is better. I know. I know it. Okay, people in the chat, if you had to pick right this minute, somebody comes up to you and says, I'm going to pay you this much money and it's an acceptable amount of money and you have to make an application for me and you have to either pick .NET MAUI or Blazor, what would, what would you pick? And we're going to go under the assumption that either would fit the bill. Because yes, I know there are differences. Let's stick with this. Okay, so um, I pick <laughs> Hang on. Duke, are you making a coffee script reference? And also, are you making fun of me? Or are you saying I'm just actually going to go get coffee? <laughs> get shot? Thindle, what would you pick? VB? He'd pick VB. Thindle would pick VB. <laughs> okay. Um. So this looks like a single file. It has a using statement. It says system. I don't know who system is, but I'm sure it's giving us something valuable. Public class of program. No, oh, how vanilla of them. Let's change that to say, and I'm probably going to break everything. Latte. Public static void main. Okay, so it's just it's just your main like constructor function. Hang on, here's Alyssa going to write questions for whenever I have someone to answer them. Is this a construct? constructor can I change its bits at will meaning can I name it what I want does it have to be public static why is it returning void does it have to return void I assume it's returning void because it's not like actually returning anything oh my god can we return something hang on return I don't know how to return things why is it auto suggesting you know what we should do we should probably open that one place that everyone always tells me to open and I never want to open think think visual studio preview mm -hmm. that one because she could, she she like auto suggests things. Oh, hi chat, <laughs> you exist. Wait, coffee wasn't a third option. <laughs> Blazor hybrid for the win. When you say Blazor hybrid, do you mean like a Maui a um, Maui Blazor app, which I'm all for? But is that what you mean? We recently went with Blazor server. Oh, that's good. I'm glad it's working for you. I haven't done anything with either, but I think maybe Maui because everyone is already doing blazer blazer in a maui web view <laughs> no static void main is the oh my god ed is here to correct apparently all the falsities i'm out of cucumbers dang it all the falsities that i'm slandering you can add yourself at any point ed that i'm slandering the internet with listen ed <laughs> i'm here if for nothing else to spread misinformation <laughs> you're doing a good job at it I thought I'd come answer some of your questions in real time. Oh my God. Thank you. Cause they, I think they're answering Oh, the construct 
action for this class would be public latte. Hang on. Oh god. So the uh .NET Fiddle is running if you look over on the left hand side it says the project type is a console application. Mhm. Mm so a console application has a public static void main that is the entry point for any pretty much every .NET app these days, but especially a console application. So you cannot change the the main to anything else. That's like you know, the thing that executes first in your application. Is it called a constructor? Yes, it is a construct. Well, no, this one isn't a constructor. This is just the main function. If it was a constructor, it would be the same um, as your class name. So it'd be public uh, void latte. Can I make one? Can I yes, do that? Can. Does the order matter? <clears throat> so I think if you add one, main, like a chicken and egg scenario here, <laughs> can have. Main will execute first, I think. I am. A well, the constructor. Constructor, constructor will execute, I guess, first, but. Mm, yeah, that's what this guy said. Yeah, that's public. Although I made mine void. I wonder if that matters. Alyssa, FYI, I'm learning a lot from listening to you. Oh, thank you. I always wonder how it is getting started with C Sharp. Yeah, the constructor, I guess, would execute first, but you would normally do like setup things in there. Maybe. I don't think you could even have dependency injection, injection at that point because you have to have something that can spin it up. So oh God, listen normally on, on the D console Dependency injection is like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody want to talk about that today. And we just want to know what overrides are. And we want to talk about all the accessors, accesses, access modifiers in the world. And I want to use an override myself. Similar, do you want to see how this person did? Look at this. They have an abstract oh, class. How cool are they? I want one. So things like that. Um, it's just a main entry point. It's just, listen, weird. It's cool, and you know it, to have public static void main. Okay? Yeah, also, they, they have a constructor in that one as well, and it's just using, it's just setting up some variables or something like that. Um, Theirs so looks I, funny. So the way they did it in your example is with what's called an expression-bodied membered constructor. Hang on. You're Different way of writing the words. same thing. An expression dismember what? <laughs> what? Expression body member <laughs> constructor. It just means there's no curly braces on it. There are curly braces on it. What are you on talking about? On the example that you just showed a second ago. Oh, the name. abstract, the, the one that doesn't have an implementation? This guy? Yeah, that one. So the or, constructor yeah, there a, is... He's got a but not an implementation. Is that why there's not... Uh, no, there, that, there's... There's a constructor there. It is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines down. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This? Eight. Eight lines down. Eight. Public square. That, no, that shape is... doesn't. Shape doesn't have one. Square yeah, has one. Yeah, shape doesn't have one. Square has one, but it's written kind of shorthand. Well, okay. I need you to. Sh you're gonna have to screen share. I want you to show me oh, how okay. you how you would longhand that. <laughs> Is that a sure. word? <laughs> yeah. Do you need me to slack you the link? Sure. Let's I'm gonna see. full screen us and then stop screen sharing because it's like lay. It's just the main entry point. Sorry, I left that on for a really long time. Uh, let's slack Ed and be like, hey Ed, here's this link. Can you make it longhand? Because we want to see it. Thank you. Okay, bye. Ooh, public latte, are we sharing? <laughs> I love you guys. Because void main is confusing to beginners, you can now remove all of the template code. <laughs> you sent me that reference. I thought you were sending me the... The code? No, you have to click That's on okay. the link and copy it yourself. <laughs> I will copy it myself. Sorry. <laughs> Info on the main. I went to JS Fiddle, of all things, really. <laughs> Info on the main and command line arguments. Oh, thank you, Weird Beard. I'm going to go pull so, that up on my Twitch. Share a screen. It won't let me. Oh, hang on. Is C Sharp I really blocked. an easy language to learn? <laughs> no, it's like, it's totally fine. I just have to. It has a learning curve. 
it does. As with anything, anything has that. Like, and it's totally fine. I just need you all to understand. Like, there is no hate here. I'm excited to learn all of yours, but I'm being very loud with my confusion. (laughs) Okay, so there's the example. Let's go zoom way in here, and uh, let's do new, and we will paste in. uh, What is? Let's paste it that way. (gasps) All right. Whoops, I don't want to see it. All right, so. Is this the same it, place I was just on? It looks so different on your machine. And by so, so different, different, I mean it. doesn't look different. It just zoomed in. That's all I did. <laughs> tried to make it bigger anyway, just so folks can see it. You know I tried to learn the violin. Tried being the keyword. <laughs> Sorry, you're on Jay's fiddle. <laughs> you're on Jay's or in .NET fiddle. It's a fiddle, man. Come on. Okay, keep going. Keep like, going. Squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. So this is the constructor here, uh, right here. And what they did is use this Lambda arrow. Whoa, wait a minute. You're saying we have a class and you try to imp- like call that class, implement it. You're calling that the constructor? Because in my mind, a constructor is the first method that runs inside a body of running code whether it's a function or a class like if it's if it's the first thing that runs then that's your constructor constructors though are responsible for building the the class so usually there's set up things going on to initialize whatever the class is going to do it's not um so it is the first like thing an all, it is but it's not like this all purpose function that just you should always rely on like running code. <clears throat> it's You're it's saying there for I, mainly set up to construct things. So don't write things that I want to write in it. <laughs> I mean, you could use it to kick off something if you really need to. Um, hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But generally, it's there to set up properties, okay. do dependency injection, set up the state of the object. Okay. Because um, like if we're in Angular world, run maybe. If we're in Angular world, it's like, yeah, just throw in the constructor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people will do that quite a bit. People will do that. <laughs> okay. So we have, you're saying that the so that is square, that line on 21 is its constructor. You could also write it this way. Square and then we throw some curly braces in here. That is the same thing. Ooh, we can have multiple constructors? What? No, it's not multiple. I commented that one out, but it, well, actually, eh, you could have multiple constructors, but that's that's another different conversation. That's cool and weird. And also So um, we have overloading. I think I talked to you about overloading before in um Oh no. Past. Is overloading different than overriding? So this would technically be I think it is more than one constructor, but only one of them is going to run. Oh, oh, oh my god, yes, you taught me this and it's so freaking cool because basically whoever like gets square can choose which direction to go, right? Like based on how many parameters they supply. How bizarre is that? That's like the coolest thing ever. Is that what you're talking about? So, like, if there's one parameter supplied, it'll go with one. If there's no parameters supplied, it'll go with the other constructor. Is that what you're... If I did this and said new square, what would the value of x be? Um, hmm. I need you to talk to me about init in a minute. Init? How do in, I get side? Init. Do I have a property for side? I don't have a property for side. <laughs> Oh, this one has a public static void main as well. Did you mean init feature? Did you mean the init feature meant more var a equals new things a dot init? Is that a question for Ed? I don't have a way to access side. We need a property. <laughs> Hang on. They're saying init is like so 1990s. But isn't that what? Um, it is 1990s. What? Isn't that what the? 
did the example have it or no? No, the example had, yeah, 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 yeah. The example had the fat arrow, which Ed oh, got rid of. get area. There's the method. I was like, it doesn't right. have a property. It's get area. Okay, so if I called get area here, what do you think the value would be? Okay, let's see. You have console x dot get area with nothing being provided, and then you have. Wait, what is happening? <laughs> so I have two constructors. I have one that just is square with no parameters. And I have another one that is square with a parameter. So it's just um, going to use the first one, but you don't have... I thought you'd have, so have two different get I, areas, but you don't. It area. Just, I run it. The area is uh, 10,000 because this is multiplying two sides together, and our default is 100. But if okay. I were to go up here and say square, uh, I want to talk about twenty, and run it again. It's four hundred. So that's what. So let's talk about overloading. Oh, so yes. there's more than one way to construct this. If we don't supply a parameter, it's going to default to one. And if we do supply a parameter, then it will use Hang on. the alternate constructor. And that's called overloading. Right? Yep. And then overriding. Can you scroll down to your bottom get area bit nibble? Mm -hmm. Him. Overriding He's, is an inheritance thing. And that's because shape is abstract, but if we just simply called shape somewhere, we wouldn't have to override him. If we didn't inherit from shape, then we wouldn't be overriding. It would just mm. be a, we'd have to take the override no, off. And be I thought it was not, not the fact that we're inheriting from shape, but it's the fact that we're inheriting from an abstract shape. So like if he wasn't abstract and therefore had an implementation, that would mean we could still inherit from him, but we wouldn't need to override because he's public or whatever. Right? No, did I mess that up? Is that totally wrong? Oh God, you give me the face. Like I just jacked everything I, up. <laughs> you talked very fast. I lost the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, in the docs, it was saying that the override on get shape was needed because at the very top, shape is an abstract class. Yeah. So abstract means that you have to have this because it's abstract. Um, first of all, you can't do this. So abstract means that I cannot come up here and save our circle equals new shape Python, though. so this will cause an error see the little thing cannot create an insta instance of an abstract type or interface of shape so i can't new a shape i have to create a class that hang implements on. shape hang on you can't new a shape you have to what because it's abstract i cannot do a new yeah, shape. I'm saying just slap a public on it and move on with your life. What's the problem, What's so, the problem here? Uh, <laughs> what this is generally used for is you want to create like a blueprint for something, but you don't want somebody to just new up the blueprint of the thing. You want them to create their own version of it. So we want people to create a shape. Yes. But we don't want them to create just a generic shape. We want them to implement their own version of that shape. And what we're saying here is we're kind of creating a contract that says, if you use this thing, which you're not gonna be able to use it on its own, you're gonna have to create one of your own. And if you do create one, then you have to implement this method on it or it, it is not valid. Oh, cool. Smab said that you can override a non-abstract method as well. Yes, you can. So one of the most common ways to do that is That's cool. um so let's, let's do this uh let's do a new Oops. king of code said going over interfaces um, i don't know what an interface is so maybe Maybe that's what we're going over. I think what I'm being taught is the differences between different access modifiers, how to use an override, when abstract is needed, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know what an interface is per se. King of uh, We can get there. So, <laughs> so uh, we have this, and then I'm going to do this. 
Here you are. Two string. God, it must be so nice to just know this in action. You can just so, if, type with your fingers. <laughs> if I <laughs> knew up as square, that is X, and I call get area, I get the area of it, right? Um, if I call to string, by default, what I get is the name of the object, the square. Mm -hmm. okay, so square to string is literally the output is square. Okay. But we can override built-in behaviors of classes. So I could say public override uh, string to string. And we can override that to string method and say return. Uh, let's go ahead and say, Alyssa. so now our squares will respond with hello, Alyssa. Uh, all code paths return a value. How, how do you figure? Ooh, someone, is this a book? Are you suggesting a book? I'm going to go pull it up. Clicky, clicky with my click abilities. Ooh. I'm missing folks. Public override string to string. What is it? Not here? all code it? paths return a value. Return. I'm returning a string. Are you missing some basic semantic stuff or something? What's the chat say? What did I goof up? Um, well, somebody was telling me about an interactive book, and I don't know what those are, but I'm going to go download it. Um, oh, maybe I got the Spotify wrong. Protected? No, C Sharp. Is C++ very similar? I thought C++ was totally C different. Inherited member. Sorry, Ed, I'm not being very helpful. <laughs> I don't understand why it's saying I'm not returning anything when I literally have a... Now, now it went away. Okay, so it was right before. That's weird. All I did is hit undo and it worked. There we For go. those of you just now joining, hi, so, my name is Alyssa Nichol. This is JavaScript Girl in a .NET world. There's lots of questions, so I'm answering them real quick, Ed. And I'm on a journey to learn .NET. I come from an Angular background, so a lot of things in the JavaScript world don't translate well over to the .NET world. Ed hopped on to help me because I was spreading a ton of misinformation about access modifiers and overrides and other things. So he's trying to clear up some things. My big crux right now that I'm learning is that you can use overrides on abstract classes and apparently non-abstract ones. So that's really cool. And hopefully you can see it in a second. I'm definitely going to check out that interactive book, Chandu. Chandu. I'm going to say Chandu. Um, but that is my recap of what we're learning uh, today and why. And my end goal is to learn C Sharp well enough to be able to write a to-do application inside a .NET MAUI app and ship it to the world. That would be amazing. Like, if I could just learn that much C sharp and get my head around it, but yes. Oh, does it? That's really cool. Apparently C++ looks similar, Ed. Did you know this? I know you used to game dev, so I'm sure you knew this. Uh, C++, I haven't really dabbled with that much. Hmm. I'll be honest. So the... Um, Did you figure out the return error? Yeah. It, the compiler just was going nuts. I actually had the right code there. See, that's what I was thinking of whenever I read indexer in the docs earlier was pointers because he's asking if C sharp uses pointers, and I was like, oh, that must be what indexer is. And it's uh, no, so C sharp generally doesn't use pointers. It can, but they're generally not used uh, because C sharp has garbage collection built in, hmm. so it uh, is going. Which is nice in my Sorry. opinion. Different I things. I, I got those. I don't really. Across. It has. Someone, someone was saying they're called references in C sharp. Yeah, that's what I meant. Not not garbage collection. Darn it. Um, it has. Um, Which is a garbage collected instance. Yeah, I I mean, wait, because C plus plus you have to manage garbage collection yourself manually. Yeah, that's kind of the point I was trying to get at. But it's, the it's, point? It's, Did you just well, make a pun? <laughs> no. Wasn't intending to, but yeah, we can do. Um, you can actually do references uh, or, um, sorry, pointers, like legit pointers. Mm. But you can have problems with garbage collection uh, if you use them. Like you, then you're you're managing your own garbage collection. That's kind of what I was trying to get at. So Maybe pointers that you 
like you're never going to run into them hardly but a steep level code and usually only if you have interop with windows functions Mm, so, that sounds fun. Like I couldn't even remember the syntax for it. It's the asterisk is a pointer. So you can actually create a pointer with the asterisk function or asterisk uh, keyword. So you, you will never see those. I guarantee it. Um, but back to overwriting, because that's what we were actually talking about. Yeah. Show me what you clicked so up. So we get the get area method from shape because we're inheriting shape mm -hmm. um everything that is a class inherits from object and object has two string by default okay so this inherited from shape and we're also inheriting from object so we get the two string that we can override so if we override two string we can make this do whatever we want right, and every string. object has a two string method So get area returns the number and the two string we can we can now override as well. So we could actually do this too if we wanted the default of two string to be get area. Uh, we could just say get area. Uh, I think that's my entire life, King. Two string on get area. Nothing new. And we could actually just forward that functionality there cool. so it like just completely throws it out it doesn't keep a little bit of it or like do both things it will it overrides the other thing kind of like css does like the last thing that gets overridden is the output is the output so you can't do like in your override when you're saying get area to string you can't have it print out the string and then do this new thing uh you could combine them you could say it this way you could do give me the, um get area Why is it giving me a hard time here? Does it not do string interpret? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Wait a minute. What? Do I have it on the wrong side? No, that should be the right side. Is that string interpolating right? Yes. Okay. So if you wanted to combine something with that, you could say, um, oops, I put that on the wrong side. Live coding fails today. Square. Who's square? What? Who and Here. why? <laughs> so this is the literal text square, and then this is. But that's still method. you. That's still you doing. Uh, let me try. Okay, so you know in SAS how you can use the ampersand to say my parents selector, and then you can like add on to that selector. Okay, so you can kind of do that. Is there um, like a version of the ampersand where I don't have to manually write out the default functionality that was once there and I'm going to add to it? No, I'm actually pointing to the OG you, method. You don't do that crap. Well, then you just don't do anything. <laughs> you, <just> leave, <laughs> you leave it off, then it goes back to what it was. Then, um, you can also do... <laughs> could do this... Uh, or sorry, base two string. That is kind of what you're asking. Oh. So what this is doing, uh, let's see, we can actually do it this way. So let's do that. So that was the original functionality. And we could say, let's just throw these both out there. Base. So is what is base? Who he's the like base class. Oh yeah, we are just saying the same thing too. Oh cool. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so you can use base, get that default functionality, and then do what you will. Oh, I love it. It's almost it. it's almost evil by design, Edward. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So and yes, you can still access. It. Yeah. Okay. And you're just throwing it all in one string so that we can see it, but like 
this is based on Syrian and then that is, oh, cool. You'll actually see this a little bit too. Uh, usually what's happening is there'll be like a method that, uh, let's throw it up here. It'll be like a public. Uh, Thesis and meditation you're overriding. Okay. Cool. I love your... this so much. So do you use abstracts a lot, Ed? Is that a thing in Blazor? Um, yes. No, cool. not abstracts. You don't. Sorry. In here, uh, <laughs> overrides you do. Override. You override. Wait, so yeah, abstracts what are you... you don't see very much. Wait, 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 wait. What are you None overriding? You um, if you're not overriding an abstract class, what are you overriding? So again, like uh, like we did with two string, um, overrides are just anything <laughs> anything you're using inheritance on. Uh, you can over you can override the base functionality of a method. Mm -hmm. um, in Blazor, you're overriding the basic component <coughs> component lifecycle methods. So. So in Blazor, override, we have, you're overriding functionality, whereas in Overload, you have built in w ways that you're planning on someone overriding functionality. Because like, you're like, oh, in this overload, you can go this route or this route. And we're going to plan for those routes. I guess they're so, totally different. They're not related at all, kind of, right? So in something like Blazor, we have a component, and the component has an initialize method, but we're making our own components. We're not using the, you know, we're not doing component itself. What we actually do is create components. We don't do it by code. We just create a file, and it does magically behind the scenes. But what it's doing behind the scenes is doing something like this. I might say like counter component. They said they said don't forget about this. And they sent me this versioning with override and new keywords. Do you know what this is? Do you know what these bits talk about? Versioning with override and new keywords. <laughs> what? Versioning between base and derived classes in different libraries can evolve and maintain backward compatibility. This means, for example, that the introduction of a new member in a base class with the same name as a member in a derived class is completely supported by C Sharp and does not lead to unexpected behavior. Ooh. <laughs> uh, is there an example in there? Just let me see what the example looks like. Um, to demonstrate this in practice, assume for a moment company A has created a class named graphics class, which your program uses. <clears throat> the, uh, your company uses this class and you use it to derive your own class, adding a new method. Um, this is like my, my, this is like what I was talking about with base, but with no base, right? because you're um, using that class and driving <clears throat> your own. Yeah, there you're just using it and adding your own method to it so far. You haven't overridden anything. Your application is used without problems. Company A releases a new version of graphics class, which resembles the following code. The new version of graphics class now contains a method named draw rectangle. Initially, nothing occurs. The new version is still binary, compatible with the old version. Um, and then I guess... I think what we're going to get to here is we have to explicitly call the method. Oh, yeah. Base out draw rectangle. Right. Because base is the one that we're. I see. Verse, instead of like our draw rectangle, we're talking about base's draw rectangle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you that want to access sense. that version yeah. of it, you can. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that totally makes sense. Like, I'm going to add your spec. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Okay. I'm just trying to so. Yeah, so you were asking about Blazor. So in Blazor, everything's a component, and it comes from the component class. And that has lifecycle methods. It's just one example of what component has. Mm -hmm. So when we have our own component, we want to set something up uh, with that initialize method, we would have mm -hmm. to override. Actually, I think this is just protected, not public. Oh, you know what? I forgot. So we would do our custom initialization inside of our override method here. Like that. And not mark 
shoulders so much longer hip strength. You can mark a method as a virtual, which allows subclasses to override them. Yeah. That so was like this. that was another part that got me on stage, <clears throat> Ed. Because I, I like was struggling with the virtual. The vir yes, the virtual. <laughs> is that so that is a thing in Blazor too? No. Yes, no. Yes. So oh. generally the, the component class is already written for you. So you wouldn't see this, but uh that's what's happening underneath the hood and then under over here in your code where you yes. are doing things. You're like, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you write your own code in there. Yes. So that way, any component in the system is going to have these methods okay. yes. that Blazor can initialize at any time. And it... All right, let me stare at what you have real quick. Public class component, and then you've got your protect virtual void constructor. Public class counter component, inheriting from that other component, and then we have protected override void. Oh, God. Oh god, it's so confusing. Because before, when we were doing the overrides, there was no virtual, and now all of a sudden there's just virtual, and I'm just supposed to accept it and move on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> Why is virtual there? Can you kill it? Can you back if I do, off? then you can't override it. This is just saying that anybody that inherits from <clears throat> component... But because I thought that was virtual, the difference between private and protected. I thought if no. you are private, you cannot override. If you are protected, you can override. Like that's the difference. So private and protected are um, these are accessors from the outside world. So if uh, let's let's do a new mm. new. You're saying it only matters like if you're sharing it with another project versus you're trying to use something internally. It has nothing to do with the override capabilities. Yes, correct. Can I have a private virtual that I override? I don't think you override private methods. <laughs> they're private. They're private. Therefore... What have got, Ed? You just told me. Mm, hang on. Yeah, I think privates are uh, <laughs> very protected. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. Uh, so okay. if we did... So private and protected are whether or not you're sharing something outside of yourself or not like if it's allowed and also there's also this other caveat of ability to override or not they are separate things they both belong to private and protected is what you just taught me with your words this is when you say yes Eliza I am wise <laughs> okay so here's public. And then... You can mark a method as virtual, which allows subclasses to override them. I'm, really, I'm still trying to grasp that one. So virtual, if it's allowed, will provide the ability to override. So we knew up a foo. We have access to bar. <laughs> knew up a foo. <laughs> <laughs> but we do not have access to that. That is illegal. Okay, so public. Hang on, let me look at what you wrote. Public string bar, private string baz. Uh huh. None of those are protected. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make a protected blimp. How's that void? Now. What's what void? It's throwing the air on the wrong line. Okay, sign void. That is so weird. <laughs> I've, why is this thing trolling me today? <laughs> that is not where the error is occurring. It's occurring <laughs> on line 10. There, now that I, I commented it out and brought it back, it, it, it put it back to where it belongs. Here. Okay. So, yeah, we can't access that, very, that <laughs> method because it's private. Okay. Uh, but can you make a protected one? Mm -hmm. And he will be accessible. Yeah, I guess I don't really get the difference between protected and public then, because you can override both of them. And I have access to, I guess it's like if I'm external, like a, another project, I won't have access to protected, whereas I would have access to public. <clears throat> if I'm another dill. 
DLL. That's our new hip term for DLL, by the way, Ed. So I don't no. have access to it in uh, in program because it is the hierarchy of it is it's not within the same program. So if we were in uh, this was an internal class. Same namespace. It's not something you deal with too often either. Uh, mm. It has to be. It's weird within a fiddle. Um, You're weird within a fiddle. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> the name space if that changes anything. Your protected line looks like it has a different arrow function from the others. Does it though? Not really. I think it's. I think it's the same. It's lined up differently. Um, public namespace. Oh my god, we're getting into namespace like today. Neat. Okay, make a make a different one. Make multiple. I want to see them all. Why would they not make multiple? Oh, we have it. access to it within an inherited class. That's what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's three thirty in the afternoon. I am. I <laughs> this. I know, and Teal was saying that it's quite illuminating how much prior knowledge is implicit to understanding the basic things, like protected and virtual. Yeah, and he says that he takes a lot of it for granted because you just assume it's obvious, but it's not. Um, so yeah, I don't think, especially once you move past the basics, sometimes it can be really hard to like go back and like break them down because a lot of people, like in the audience, they would come up to me after when I was messing up my, in my .NET MAUI app and they would explain to me like what I needed to do to get it to work, but they didn't know why I needed that. They just knew if you try it this way, it will run. And so I think that's like, as with all knowledge. Oops, like, I'm having a brain fart unprotected. I'm going to have to go back to class. <laughs> <laughs> Something they use all the time and just ignore completely. <laughs> like I can't contrive I, a scenario for it. No, but I think I think that's how it works though. I think like with something outside of oh, like yeah. outside of I whether it's like the namespace or the project. And I think maybe it's happening because you're inside a console app. I think if we did it inside of a normal app, it would yeah. make more sense. I have to look that one up again just to get a good example. Um having a brain fart today on that one. But private private and public use definitely all the time. Um, I'm gonna screenshot this real quick. <laughs> it's only fun. <laughs> okay, I got that. And then, can did you make? Did you open up a new fiddle? You had something else on the other one. I wanted to screenshot. Oh, I think I is it I gone forever? It. It's fine. Yeah, I think it, it blew it out. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch the video to get a screenshot. <laughs> oh no! No, <laughs> oh, the vod. Well, I really appreciate you, man. This was great, and I honestly have learned so much in this hour and a half sesh. Um, and I do apologize if I, if anyone was here to learn along with me and I made it worse, I apologize because I definitely made the protected thing worse. No, <laughs> go back and double check no. on that one. I think I understand the basics. I just need to, I need to go and find a way of like implementing the example. But I'm really excited. Um, I'm gonna try that interactive book. I don't know. Do you know what interactive books are? Ed, let me show this. Uh, someone sent me this. I think it was Chan Chandu. Okay, so yeah, I had to look this up real quick. Protected member is accessible within its class and by a derived class uh, instance. So I don't know why my second example didn't work because I actually thought I had that right. So if I, you inherit from something, you should be able to just call any protected class on it. some reason it was throwing errors at me. I was getting a lot of false negatives anyway, though. So. I, well, the fiddle was being weird, man. The fiddle was I, being I weird think, today. I think that's kind of been my um, lesson of... <laughs> my lesson in this .NET journey. So many people in the community, 
friends, Ed, Sam, have told me before, why, why are you doing it like that? Why won't you just open Visual Studio? And I'm like, because. So yeah. when I finally gave in and opened up Visual Studio, it was so funny. I had a given, it was like five, five days after Maui had exited preview. I, I'm kidding you not, Ed. You had actually told me how to fix my code. Couldn't couldn't get it rendering properly. Like when I would run it in the command line, run my run my build and run command, mm -hmm. it was like you you couldn't see the difference. And I went over to Sam, and Sam goes, "That is correct. I don't know why it's not working." Opened the same code in Visual Studio, ran the like emulator simulator over there, and it was like showing, like it was working. And and I had them side by side. Like I still had the one where I was using my command line to build, and it was just bizarre. It was like unless it was going through Visual Studio, you weren't actually seeing those changes. So I feel like I kind of learned my lesson of like, stop fighting the tooling and like, just go with it. Like they want you in Visual Studio for a reason. Like, why are you being paid? Like, yeah. So I, I definitely- are hard. <laughs> yes, I do use VS Code, uh, Weird Beard, and I love VS Code, um, but especially with Maui and the hot reloading, that was a deal breaker for me because for a long time I would actually like pull up my VS code and have my Maui code in and then I would just use a command line prompt or a command line build command to run my application. But that's when I had those differences happening and I was like, what the frick? Like you know, just basic things, make this rectangle this size wasn't showing up. Go over to Visual Studio, it showed up. And so that's where I just kind of stopped fighting it. And so with Fiddle, the same thing, like, I feel like I've learned the lesson and I'm going to just, <laughs> for now at least, use Visual Studio, but I do love VS Code. When, when you're ready to talk, uh, uh, Interfaces, I can help. Yes. Uh, is, that, is that what's next? Is Interfaces what's next? On my list. I mean, there's like so many things to learn. I'm past numbers. I read the chapter on it. I will not be going back through them again. They were boring as fudge. So... It, where does where do interfaces lie on this journey? Interfaces, interfaces, interfaces. So interfaces are usually grouped in with inheritance. Okay. Uh, they're similar to inheritance, but you're not inheriting the um, the entire class. You're just you're subscribing to the contract. Here's what so. I was already kind of learning interfaces from you today. Uh, I feel like we need a part two and interfaces. <laughs> So interfaces come in really handy when you talk about like um, well, dependency injection gets a little bit too far maybe, but does it? Um, that's where it's used a lot, uh, and where it can actually like you'll actually have like an aha moment like oh I need interfaces for that is if you look at um, an example I'm working on of building a .NET. Uh, Maui app and a Blazor mm -hmm. app that share code. Yeah. So you use interfaces to kind of uh, allow them to use the same semantics. But I mean, type is this like TypeScript interfaces where it's yeah. like this blueprint of how you want something to look and like it'll yell at you if you have something in your interface. But when you implemented and you said this is going to be this interface, like the same as TypeScript. Yeah. So how is that relevant to inheritance? <laughs> it's, wait, what? It's similar. It's similar. The way it behaves is very similar. You set up, um, you're not technically inheriting from it, but you say, I want these methods to exist on the objects that you're going to create. Mm. Weird Beard said a you're inheriting class. a contract you have to implement in your class. So it's similar to having a base class that you inherit from, but the base class is even more concrete. It's got methods already. When we and use interfaces in a class, interfaces in my Angular apps in TypeScript, it is an optional step to clean the crap up and not have just a mess that is a mess. So is it kind of the same, or do you like need it to go forward? Because like it's like a, a nice to have not a need to actually get the functionality working you see what i'm saying um it depends one could get by without interfaces in yeah i mean you can <laughs> you can get pretty far without interfaces okay um but they're gonna make life a lot easier if you know how to use them right look at eye collection it's a decent reference oh i will Let me pull that up weird weird 
Um, oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, okay, I am going to make that the next one of the next things I learn then and that I use. But I really do want to. I don't know if any of you have a good example. Are to do apps not a thing in your world, Ed? It's like no, all we have plenty of to do apps. Do you? Because yeah. like your homegirl could not find a .NET Maui to do app to save her life. Oh well, Maui's brand new. Right? <laughs> I mean, Maui, they're they're trying to like show you how amazing it can be on all platforms, and a to do app is not going to be. Amazing. You take that back, Ed. To do apps are amazing. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, we can do uh, to do in Blazor. To do on the console. How different would a to do app in Blazor look from a to do app in Maui? How how vastly different are we are we talking? Um, not too different. And no, if you're yeah, there's got to be a Blazor hybrid, be one. Exactly the same. Wait, no, Ed, no, no, no. We can't talk I about. I have a... app. It hurts my brain too much. I don't understand the difference. Oh, Blazor hybrid so much better. Oh no, like if you're talking about .NET new Maui dash Blazor, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Because that that's like pure magic. I love the Blazor hybrid app. I love Blazor hybrid apps. But I still don't understand as far as like syntactically the the like Blazor C sharp versus Maui C sharp and like do, do you think those like classes and functions and and like ways we're calling things and overriding things like all that's going to be the same? It's going to be very similar. The only difference Aww. is you're not using you're not using HTML. <laughs> you're using XAML. Oh, so yeah, I feel like and that's what I need to do next nightmare. is learn I mean, XAML. I th yes, that's what I need to do. I think that's going to bring it all together, Ed, because as soon as I have something visual on screen, I'm like, oh, crap, that's not working. That's broken. That's going to like so XAML. I found, I found my to-do app in uh, XAML basics. GitHub. Oh, you did? You want to add it to the screen? Uh, I'll paste it in chat here. So I have a to-do of course, I can't do anything simple. <laughs> we were all joking earlier before you My to-do has an on-do. <laughs> About how on our res all of our resumes, yours included, Ed, we all get 10 years of Maui experience. Like, just right there. Like, <laughs> Ooh, hang on. You shared it with me. I'm going to click on it. Click with my clicker. Uh, okay. I have to run very, very soon. I'm actually going to pull your to-do app down though, because that's going to help me a lot because what I wanted to do, oh, here's perfect. I'm going to challenge myself to learn XAML and look at Ed's to-do code and put it into a Maui app and make it work. <laughs> so my to-do app has a an on-do function. That on, what is your on-do? You so it, it keeps the state of the, the to-do list. And when you add things to the list, it's keeping track of like, all of the objects in that state. And if you remove something, it doesn't destroy it. It just takes a snapshot of the state without the thing. So if you press undo, you get the objects back that were oh. removed. So you can like why kind of time shift you your, so fancy? your state. No one asked for that. Because to do let to do's are boring. And oh my god, they're them. not boring for people who are learning. So mine has a an undo feature. <laughs> Okay, love the mug, Alyssa. Thank you. My sister got it for me, and my mom has one too. And so we all like when we all get together, we're all literally drinking from the same cup, and it's a problem. So I had to put stickers on mine so I could differentiate this is, it. This is my mug. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't, can we show that? Can we show your mug on screen? <laughs> are we to do shaming now? Yeah, we are to do shaming. Ed went too far. Took it too far. <laughs> This is homegrown stuff, by the way. This is like mm. made down the street from my house. Like, God, you're so local. Like, like miles away. you're so just, that's just so you. Yes. That is. Although, not all of us, Ed, have fancy distilleries close by. So, just saying. I have like 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, <I> literally, <laughs> there's at least 10. All right, I am gonna go learn some XAML. I have took taken, I've taken away from today. I need to know XAML to accomplish what I need to do in life. And yes, Ed, Blazor and HTML are pretty cool, but they're not 
different enough from my day to day. I need to like really vastly step off a cliff here. So that's what we're going for. So tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock my time, nine yes. o'clock Alyssa time. Yes. I'm going to do blazer power hour. And you're teaching XAML? I'm going to build a blazer hybrid app that has also a blazer web app. Oh, and they that. all share the same components and code. Oh, I love that so much. Okay. Uh, Got that on. question a lot from folks. Adding this here. And also, how late do you stream? So just from uh, your time, 9 to 10, or my time, 10 to 11? One hour of code. One hour. One, One hour. hour? I'll okay. show you, uh, you know, how to build web, desktop, and mobile all from one project. Oh, don't worry. I'm well averse to the, the magic that is a Maui Dash Blazer application. It's, awesome. it's magic. Okay, I'm off. I'm signing off. You all were beautiful and amazing, and I love you. To do is obviously Alyssa's is learning. Cut. Yes, it is. And Ed had to take it <clears throat> somewhere that nobody wanted it to be taken. So it's fine. Token. That's what I'm here took. for. <laughs> it is. That should be your, <laughs> your tagline. All right. I love you all. I'll see you next week. Um, I will hopefully be further along in my to-do app journey and we can all talk about XAML learnings and things I found. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you. Thank you. <laughs>